where do you want to start this thing off? You want to talk about crypto? And I, I know you're not super involved with it, but I'd be happy to kind of at least get get back to what I was saying about that dip and share a little yeah. about what I'm doing there. Yeah, and, and, and I love talking to you about that space. And like you said, I'm not I'm not uh, super involved in it, but I'd love to get your feedback on it. I know you've taken your lumps here over the last few months. Um, I think it's at its lowest right now since what December 2020, and you're about a half million uh, in the red since then. Um, what's your take on it? What are you doing at this point? What's that? You've been yeah, buying it on the way down. I know that. I know you've been buying it on the way down. You've been dollar cost averaging. You've done videos on that. Has your philosophy changed? Uh, you know, has your mindset changed on it? I know it's been a long term play for you forever. Are you doing anything differently now than you were, you know, two months ago, six months ago? All right, great question. I actually want to show a website here. This is a website I found last April, so about a year ago, and it really opened my eyes on what is possible when you're just consistent about things. And I think what I want to point out is when it comes to cryptocurrencies, I, I am in no way, shape, or form an expert on it. I, I'm constantly bewildered. I'm listening to people that know far more than I do. This is not the channel to come to for your cryptocurrency investment advice or education. This is just simply an example of how I'm choosing to go about things personally because I see the long-term play here. And I want to be very clear about that. There are ways of looking for short-term opportunities inside cryptocurrencies and even ways of producing an income stream through that space. That's not what I'm doing. I'm going about this exclusively through a long-term lens. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this over 10, 15, 20 years, and I have been, and it helps me desensitize, which means I'm actually really only focusing on investing in cryptocurrencies with money I can afford to lose. And that's a very important aspect to this. God forbid any of you have gone out and leveraged your way into cryptocurrencies. That is a huge mistake and something that absolutely needs to be avoided. Most things should not be leveraged for. While this is a channel that believes very, very strongly that leverage and borrowing OPM, other people's money, in order to reinvest it under speculated rates of return that can produce a, a margin of a, a return on that investment for you, uh, you know, this channel talks a lot about that being one of the keys to success. It's the Robert Kiyosaki concept. But we're also the people that understand that debt and borrowing will co constantly remain your greatest threat. And so that's why we also uh, focus heavily on accelerating the elimination of both non-mortgage and mortgage debts. Uh, I think there's a tremendous argument to be made for paying long-term mortgage uh, balances off over a full 30 year period, given the you know recent historic uh, low interest rates. Uh, that I think needs to be reevaluated under today's rates and, and moving forward. Uh, it's not an easy black and white decision, but regardless, debt is a threat. And I, I should probably trademark that, consider this a verbal trademark uh, because <laughs> that, that's a pretty great saying. I'm gonna put it on a t-shirt at some point. Let's go ahead and jump to this website. It's under dcabtc.com. This is a pretty cool resource though. It stands for dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. Now this is not a speculated outcome, okay? This graph down here actually showcases what, what's happened historically over the period of time indicated in this drop down here. And I, I just wanna show that if you're consistent about your investment strategies, and this obviously is, is specifically talking about Bitcoin only, no other cryptocurrencies or tokens, no, no other digital assets, and no other investments specifically. Um, but if you're consistent, even with these massive swings, you can see that if I were to go say six years back, the chart shows this December of 2017 into January of 2018, drop off. And this is when you might remember Bitcoin reached a, an all-time high of about $20,000. And uh, shortly thereafter, this 18 or 19 month dip started leading all the way into March of 2019, where that $20,000 Bitcoin fell all the way down to somewhere in a into the $35 or $3,400 range. It was uh, somewhere in the vicinity of like an 82% drop. It was substantial, right? And you've got all these retail buyers that 
panic when they start to see a fall off. Uh, things like inflation or interest rates going up creates less liquidity and cash flow on a month to month basis. Many of you are probably feeling that inside your, your budgets right now. So there's just less money to go into the markets and people who start freaking out or need the funds to cover that deficiency start pulling out of the market. And that's why you'll see a lot of these big drops. And you can see here that even if over just the last six years, you had been investing $100 per week or around $430 a month or around $5,200 per year, that's a small investment amount. And I argued regularly that if all you're investing is $5,200 a year or $52,000 every 10 years or $156,000 over 30 years, you're going to have a very, very difficult time coming up with enough money to live a, 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 an extraordinary retirement. And off of that $31,300, you can see even with the recent drops and uh, this this is including what's happening now. This $31,300 invested would still be worth 389,000 bucks. That's an 1143% increase over that six year period of time. Let's take a look. And one thing I've loved about this website is that you can actually compare it to other assets. They've got the Dow Jones Industrial as well as gold that can be compared with. And you can see those graphs here, as well as these boxes above with that same 31,300 showing a $38,146 value of put into gold over the last six years for only a 21.88% return and a $42,656 value under the Dow Jones with a 36.28% return. So while we're experiencing something that I think terrifies the average investor, the typical Mr. and Mrs. homeowner or John and Jane, W2 wage earner, about throwing money towards an asset class like cryptocurrencies. And had you only been purchasing when things were red hot, like when it was coming up to that $20,000 point, or back when we started seeing a $65,000 high in, uh, it looks like April of 2021, and then that falling by somewhere around 55% to $29,000 Bitcoin in just July. So we're seeing from April to July, a 55% drop all the way then to hit an all-time high again of about $68,000 in November of 2021. Look, that's high volatility for someone like me. I'm not used to those peaks and valleys either. And it's very difficult to, to, uh, to get comfortable with that. But this type of a resource definitely reassures me that if I'm buying at both the highs and on the way down, and I'm doing that without any lapse in consistency, because the only way these numbers make uh, add up to 389,000 over this six year period is because each and every week without falter, this example is showcasing a $100 investment being made. So finding a comfort zone within your net cash flow position, going back to what I said in the beginning at the top of the show, uh, just getting your, your uh, eyeballs on your numbers, understanding your budget, proper budget management so that you can maximize how much is left over at the end of the month. If you can't come up with $430 a month, go out and start driving for Uber. Uber, Uber Eats, you can make 100 bucks a week with no problem driving one shift and find a way to pop $430 in here. Because take a look at what happened over a nine-year term on this, Michael. The long term of this still shows that a $47,000 total investment is worth $2.7 million today. So for me, my buying strategy has remained the same. As a long-term play, as a long-term player in crypto, I'm buying each and every week consistently. Now, I want to put more when I end up with windfalls because my primary focus is on income. My primary focus is on cash flow. And the way you get cash flow is the difference between what you earn and what you spend. So the way I increase cash flow is either I make more or I spend less or combination of the two. Well, the things I'm spending money on, I'm doing so a lot of times by choice, which means I, I want to. I don't want restriction 
when it comes to spending. I've already maximized my interest cost reductions. I've minimized my outgoing expenses on things I don't want to pay for. So the things I am paying for, I want to. So I, I, my, my point here is making more money for me is the key with really no upside uh, capacity to that, right? Whereas there is a maximum potential when it comes to spending less. There's only so much you can cut. You can go all the way through the Dave Ramsey strategy and eat beans and rice. That's not for me. I want a, a great lifestyle. If I want something, I don't want to be told no. I want to be generous. I want to be selfish. I don't want to care about price tags. So considering that, I want to look at where there is no maximum upside potential, which is the income side of the balance sheet. And so earning, 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 earning gives me the ability to afford not just a consistent investment of something as little as 100 bucks a week, but far more than that, as well as shoving money in when I start to see these, these lows come about. And today is a perfect example of that. Bitcoin has been hitting numbers that look extremely attractive to me when it comes from the buying standpoint. I, I want to be shoving money into it at this point, not wondering why uh, I didn't pull it out. Um, so that, that goes to the answer of your question is that, that's what I'm doing with, with my cryptocurrencies. I'm just looking at it long-term and, and, and writing it off, setting it and forgetting the, the automatic purchase. Yeah. See, I think that's important for people to really recognize is that that's just the exact opposite of what most folks are out there doing and kind of the illustration you made of, you know, John Q, uh, you know, W2 wage earner that is doing that panic selling right now. Obviously, there's no, it doesn't make sense to buy high and sell low. Obviously, that's the exact opposite of what you want to do. But what you're saying is, even as it's been going down, you've been using the, the same dollar cost averaging technique that you utilized when it was at the peak of the market. You're continuing to buy all the way back down because it is that long-term play. It still makes sense to you. How do you, how do you get someone to make that mind shift? What does I that think, boil down to basically dollars and cents? You've got, you know, obviously right. additional capital just from multiple revenue streams. So you've got there prescribing to your own, to your own kind of methodology about multiple uh, streams of income that has enabled you to continue down this path, even though you're, you know, that asset class is continuing to go down. I think it's a combination of both. I think you bring up two really excellent uh, ways of going about doing that and, and, and blending those together is important. I'm a math person. I have to see the numbers for it to make sense. So tracking your, your, your numbers is, is going to be the theme of today's video. It has, you have to. And I know most people really suck at this. And I know most people really suck at it because I've been coaching people on their personal finances for 15 years. Thousands of people a year I've been coaching on personal finances. So I recognize the very inconsistent approach people take with their money. They're not consistently tracking. It's very rare when I see it. I would, I would argue it's, it's single digit, if not low single digit percentages of people that are consistent about tracking. How can you expect to be consistent about your investing? if you can't even be consistent about your tracking, mm -hmm. it's step one. It's walking before you run. It's crawling before you walk. So, so that's all about really important. getting it. Right, because that's how, you, that's how you make the decision, Michael. That's how you understand what your comfort zone is. And I generally recommend to people to lean into the discomfort. Look, I, I'm not saying put enough money in there to where you're experiencing sleepless nights. That was my first go at crypto. And when I was losing tens of thousands, it was, it, it was just eating at me. Mm -hmm. And yet here we are now, and I'm seeing hundreds of thousands in losses, 200 of which is my own personal money. So I just want to be very specific about this because when I talk about a $550,000 drop, this is not all earnings and winnings and house money that I'm that I'm seeing evaporate. These are actual real dollars that came from my pocket. And yet I'm still putting money in. I put money in yesterday. I put money in the week before. I put money in the week before that. And it's not as fun to watch it go down. Psychologically, I think you're right. The, the shifts in mindset come with time and experience. But 
by looking at things like this, again, going back into a sort of a, a data centric approach and looking at resources that show me that my decisions are the right ones, looking at something like a cash flow cruncher and seeing that of the 2000 or 3000 or $4,000 every month that's left over, I'm carving out an affordable hundred dollars a week, 430 a month. And I'm able to then write it off as a money spent, treat it as if it's any other payment that you're responsible for every single month and forget about it. The people that I think experience the most trouble with this are people that are looking at this as a sort of safety net buffer. They're, they're coming in and saying, well, my portfolio is something I can go and tap into. I know I can sell it and it'll be in my bank by tomorrow. It's liquid and watching it go away, if I were planning on needing it, would be problematic. So if your comfort zone is $50 a week, maybe shoot it to a $65 per week consistent investment. Nudge it slightly higher than your comfort zone, but not so high that it's gonna cause you trouble if you experience these dips. I also am very careful about purchasing um, cryptocurrencies that have the best chance at long-term value. Not going after the altcoins, not going after uh, projects that um, you know are hyped up, and you end up with these rug pulls. I think it's really you know for the most part. And if I'm talking to loved ones, my family and friends, I'm generally recommending just divvying up your investment right in half between 50% to Bitcoin and 50% to Ethereum, and that's where I'm putting my money. I'm putting my money into Bitcoin and Ethereum. I'm doing that each and every week without fail. And I have for two years. It's not the same approach I took the first time I was in crypto, but this resource has certainly helped me understand the benefits of the concept of dollar cost averaging. So figuring out your numbers and then figuring out what your comfort zone is from there. And then basically putting a plug and play in place where you just have one of these exchanges that you can go in and set an automatic purchase that you literally practically forget about. And I only say literally practically because I still have to pay attention because I'm, I'm coming in and shoving extra when there's you know, uh, money sitting on the sidelines that I want to get in, um, but it exceeds that average that I'm putting in each and every week. Uh, and so I, I have to pay at least enough attention to where it's painful. It'd be a lot easier where I, if I could just forget about it for the next 10 or 15 years. But I, I know that in 10, 15, 20 years, I, I'm such a strong believer that whatever amount I put in, I, I'm going to wish it was more, that I'm, I'm really following my own advice by leaning into uh, a, a fairly heavy area of discomfort when it comes to how much I'm actually investing into cryptocurrencies. Um, so that, that would be my answer. Yeah. So I think, I mean, from what I'm hearing, it all has to start with just having your financial house in order. I mean, you have to know what additional cash flow you've got every month. Based on that, you know, if there is a time to put more into crypto, for example, that you've got, you know, that dispendable income to be able to, to, to put into that. You didn't know that. You don't know those numbers unless you've gone through a cash flow cruncher or something uh, to that extent where you know exactly where your money's going. You know what your excess is every single month. That way, when opportunities do arise, you know if that's something you're going to be able to take advantage of. So really starts there. You also talked about time and experience. So you talked about your first time going through crypto and you did it all the wrong ways. Um, well, you learned from that experience and now you're doing it differently today. And I can look at my same, you know, kind of professional business career. Guys, this is my, um, this will be my third really major economic downturn. I was in business during the dot-com. I was obviously in business during the Great Recession. Uh, you know, COVID started, obviously there was a dip there and now we're looking like potentially heading to another recession, I don't react the same way to markets that I did, you know, 20 years ago. And, and Matthew, you're the same way. Within a couple of years, you know, you've changed your entire investment strategy with crypto. You are sticking with it. It's a system you've got in place now. You set it and forget it. And it's a long-term play for you. So it all started with knowing your own numbers, uh, believing in an asset class, which obviously you do in the digital space, and then just following through and being consistent on it. Right. Well, I, it actually reminds me of this incredible 
um, uh, you know, point that I had run into. Um, I even took a picture of it. I was looking for it, but you could see this uh, th this message here that that popped up on my phone the other day that Usain Bolt has won nine Olympic gold medals, brother. Nine. Do you realize that in order to win those nine gold medals, he ran for 115 seconds. <laughs> he made $199 million. So $200 million for 115 seconds. And you can look at those first two facts or first three facts and say, is ridiculous. And yet, how easy is it for us to forget that he trained for over 20 years mm -hmm. in order to earn that accomplishment? Folks, I think what you're bringing up is such a tremendous point. And there are times where tucking tail and running feels um, really tempting. It's going to get worse. You know, when they talk about blood in the streets, I think metaphorically that says everything we need to know. If it's being compared to uh, full-blown warfare, uh, it can feel really, really shitty to be involved, you know, right smack dab uh, in the middle of, a, of an economic disaster. And this could, be, uh, this could be a global recession. We end up experiencing the debt loads in many other countries are outrageous. And um, I think that's one of the, the key points that I, I usually end up looking at is just the over leveraging that's taking place. So it might get really painful and you have to be strong enough. You have to be strong enough to continue to push forward and understand the opportunities are right in front of you. We may never see another $22,000 Bitcoin. We might see a $12,000 Bitcoin. I, I can tell you one thing, I'll be buying at both prices, right? And so I, I, I'm not buying with everything I have because my money then gets spread out into other areas in order to diversify my wealth creation. And I'm normally categorically breaking these up. Michael, I'm not sure how your approach compares to this, but normally I'm looking for the long-term net worth investments, comparing that to the short-term net cash flow investing. And the short-term net cash flow investing is the income that we've been discussing. Where do we focus on income streams and building income streams and growing your income, whether you're working for somebody else or for yourself, is a lot of hard work. And people don't like to face the reality that they might have to put in a lot of hard work for anything. So they oftentimes put their energy into, well, where can I just put my money and it's going to grow? Well, that's a long-term net worth play, unless you're taking really high risk chances and you're in some ways becoming a bit of a degenerate gambler. And that is certainly not what we're going to recommend here on this channel. You might strike it rich and get extremely lucky. And make no mistake, luck has played a role in much of my success, but also hard work through the experiences and being consistent with that hard work, having that new experience. And every time I go out and experience something, I'm learning something new. So Breaking those into two separate categories is very, very important to me. And my money is diversified between those long-term net worth investments, money I never expect to need, but <laughs> want for my retirement years versus the money I'm putting into the short-term net cash flow uh, earnings and income strategies. Um, and so, uh, you know, Cryptocurrencies, long-term net worth, do not put all the money into that. Um, and, and I think that you'll, you'll be very glad that you at least have a portion of your funds going into it on a consistent basis. There are some pretty good uh, resources out there. I mean, I would just do a Google search on YouTube, uh, a Google search or a YouTube search regarding those keyword um, phrases. You know, what percentage should I put into cryptocurrency and just see what comes up. Um, I, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. Like I said, I think any amount that you choose to put in, you'll wish it was more eventually, mm -hmm. uh, as long as you're putting it into the right, into the right coins. Um, however, uh, you don't necessarily have to rely on money you already have. Like I already said, if I had just been driving for Uber for the last nine years and popping $430 a month into Bitcoin, I have $2.7 million currently. So 
uh, you know, this is a great argument that even people who aren't necessarily as excited about going out and starting a business, uh, building something that's, that's scalable, having a staff and personnel and payroll to worry about, uh, and having to get brick and mortar or, or inventory of something, uh, who cares? You don't need to participate in all this trend, this entrepreneurial trend. Go out there and just 1099 your way to a hundred bucks a week, raking leaves, uh, driving somebody's deliveries around, driving humans around. This, this is easy stuff. There's a really cool channel. Actually, let me give it away while we're on the topic of income, okay? I want to find this channel. Really good young kid. Um, I, I don't know his name offhand, but shout out to him because he comes up with these amazing, he, he basically puts income ideas to the test, right? These TikTok trends. Mm -hmm. And he goes out and just figures out whether or not he can pull it off. And the ideas that people come up with to easily go out and find hundreds of, of income in a day is uh, completely realistic. Um, so anybody that's not doing it, frankly, um, I just don't have a, a super high tolerance for excuses. All right, so let's see. Let's see if I can find this YouTube channel here. Yeah, his name is Caden Booth. I'll throw it in the description. Shout out Caden. I mean, this guy's killing it by testing this stuff. And the cool thing is he's turning it into a social media business for himself too, where he actually films what he's doing. And then that becomes a new income stream as well. All you have to do is emulate what someone like Caden's doing. And not only will you end up with the hundred, 200, $400 for that effort in that day, but you can start to diversify your income inside of that specific space. And frankly, if he starts promoting other things that are doing really well, he could find a way to be paid on those too. There are literally uh, a lot of creative ways um, that you can make money, um, not just through the affiliate side, but through sponsorships and uh, other benefits of him doing this on social and showcasing his experiments. So Caden yeah. Booth, good stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean, $100 a week, it doesn't even have to come from your own current cash flow. Mm -hmm. Just go out and make it.